Good morning to partial lockdown, as we have once more been restricted, at least in the access we can make into one another's homes. If it saves lives, then that makes it a good day. But it doesn't feel so good, does it? I recall the pause that took place when churches reopened around the start of July, as people had to wait to get their haircuts done. Some had to get their stale clothes freshened up. Uh, and parishes went through endless lists to try and make us ready for in-church services. This week's announcement feels like a bit of a reversal. But thankfully, churches are still open, as we, as many other businesses, are adopting those two-metre social distancing rules and keeping masks on. We're not a business. We're a church. We're a community. We're a people who come together to worship God. At least we have somewhere to go. In today's reading, Jesus issues severe and harsh warnings to religious teachers. He was thinking of the teachers of his day, I'm sure. But if the cap fits, as they say, I immediately think of leaders in my own denomination as Jesus refers to flowing robes. But let's hear the passage first. Mark chapter 12, verse 38. As he taught, Jesus said, Watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honour at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. And let's be frank here. There are leaders in all walks of life, including churches, who love or even live for public acclaim. And there is a huge swathe of the public who yearn for such style and sense of presence from its public figures. Magazines are produced about what the royals are wearing. Whole companies are built to design and sell special clothes and robes for clergy, for council members, for the legal profession, and for all sorts of gentrified people. And people love it, for the most part. They want their leaders to look well. What I notice in my own heart is my need to make excuses for myself when I put on the flowing robes which are part of our church regulations. Because to wear them under compulsion and to not revel in wearing them, that seems okay. I don't really like it, but I'll do it. Jesus talked about the teachers who like to walk around in robes and who like to be greeted in the public square and like to be given a prominent seat wherever they go. If I don't like it, does that mean it's okay to wear them? As for the prayers the teachers make, clergy can be unnecessarily wordy with their prayers, but not just clergy. Many of the prayer meeting fades into the distance uh, as one or two members hoard the limelight and make lengthy prayers too, and the rest of us kind of get a little bit sleepy. Jesus here is concerned above all with show. The ultimate put down my dad would make, and he did it very rarely, was to describe a fellow clergyman as a bit of a showman. That's what was in Jesus' mind in his day as well. So where do we go from here? Well, I have my clerical shirt on today, not for show, but to get into a hospital more easily. And we will have prayers together but none so long that I either impress you or hopefully send you to sleep. And I do this without it costing you anything. So that covers the bit about devouring people's houses. Let's pray. The Lord be with you and also with you. 
let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As we pray today, we pray for God's strength for focus, to help us understand and follow and obey the new regulations. It's not easy that God would help us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for wisdom in dealing with people of different generations from our own in our daily life, those who are older or those who are younger, who treat the whole business with a different level of seriousness than we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for compassion in our hearts for those who are working in dangerous settings, those who are working in hospitals, those who are dealing with members of the public who come up close to ask their questions and don't understand keeping their distance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering from or caring for the victims of the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And some words by Stuart Townend and Keith Getty. Teach us, Lord, full obedience, holy reverence, true humility. Test our thoughts and our attitudes in the radiance of your purity. Cause our faith to rise, cause our eyes to see your majestic love and authority. Words of power that can never fail. Let their truth prevail over unbelief. I pray that God will help each of us to deal with changing situations facing the whole country, our local families and neighbourhood, and eventually uh, other parts of society. We pray for wisdom and for courage, and especially for God's inner peace to sustain us and keep us that we do not fall into gloom or depression, but hold on to him with hope. Look forward to a blessed future where all the advances of these recent months in medical research will result in a much safer world in the future. And to see this as a, a demanding and dreadful time, but one which has got good outcomes. I hope that's the case for you and for me, as we go through today and the coming days. Good day.